Hi everyone, in today's lesson we'll be taking a look at how to determine the zeros of a cosine function when the trig circle cannot help us locate our possible angles. So, in your notebook, please put down today's subtitle, find the zeros of a cosine function and in brackets not visible on the trig circle. Determining the zeros of a cosine function when a trig circle cannot assist us is not terribly difficult and simply depends on your algebra skills and an appropriate use of your calculator. We will be analyzing this procedure through two different cases. However, by the time we finish the video, something about the two cases will be very surprising. Let's first begin by taking a look at case one, where the cosine of the angle produces a positive x-coordinate. The following example will produce this kind of situation. Suppose I ask you to calculate the zeros of the function y equals 3 cosine of pi over 2 times x minus pi subtract 1. Before we determine the zeros, let us first determine the period of this function. Don't forget, the period must be used later in your final conclusion. In a cosine function, the period is calculated with the formula 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b. In our example, that will produce 2 pi divided by the absolute value of pi over 2, which will give us a period of 4 radians. Let's set this period aside for later use in our conclusion and begin the procedure of determining zeros. As with any function, to determine the zeros of the cosine function, we set the value of y to 0, and our job will be to isolate the x. Next, we need to isolate the actual cosine expression. That means that we need to move the negative 1 and the coefficient 3 to the other side of the equal sign. That will produce cosine of pi over 2 times x minus pi is equal to 1 third. Now, if you try to locate the possible angles which will cause an x coordinate of 1 third, on the trig circle, you will not find it. So, in order to determine the possible angles which will cause the x-coordinate to be one-third, we have to do some legwork. To do this legwork, I tend to do it on the side. To determine one of the possible angles, we can simply use the inverse cosine button on your calculators. Please make sure you're in radian mode before you do this. So, the first possible angle which can cause an x-coordinate of one-third on our trig circle will occur at the inverse cosine of one-third and that will give us around 1.23 radians. The big question now is how do we determine the second possible angle which can cause an x-coordinate of one-third on our trig circle? In order to properly explain the next step in our procedure, I must show it graphically. So please take a moment to pause the video and prepare the following graph. This graph shows an approximation of 1.23 radians, which is around 70 and a half degrees. Using this diagram, you can observe that an x coordinate of one third will occur when the terminal side is in this location. This terminal side is produced by the following angle. And the big question is, how do we determine the size of that angle? Using logical deduction allows us to conclude that the second possible angle is caused by the calculation 2 pi minus the first angle. Or, in other words, the second angle is calculated by subtracting the first angle from 360 degrees. Therefore, in our example, that will give us a second possibility occurring at 2 pi subtract 1.23 radians, which gives us around 5.05 radians. What this means is that 
the two possible angles that will cause an x coordinate of one third are 1.23 radians and 5.05 radians. With this information, we can now return to our main procedure and further state that the entire expression pi over 2 times x minus pi can either equal to 1.23 radians or to 5.05 radians. Continuing our procedure in the following manner allows us to determine that x could either equal to 3.92 radians or x could equal to 6.36 radians. This finally allows us to conclude that for our example, the zeros will occur when x equals 3.92 radians and every 4 radians after that, or the zeros will also occur at 6.36 radians and every 4 radians after that. Next, let's take a look at case 2, where the cosine of the angle will give us a negative x-coordinate. The following example will produce this kind of situation. As usual, let's first determine the period for later use in our final conclusion. The period is always calculated with the formula 2 pi divided by the absolute value b. And in our example, if you do it correctly, we will end up with a period of pi radians. Let's set this aside for now and begin the procedure of determining the zeros of this function. As with any other function, to determine the zeros, we set the value of y to 0 and isolate the x. Isolating the actual cosine expression, we will end up with the cosine of x minus pi is equal to negative 3 over 4. If you search the trig circle, you will not find which possible angles would cause an x-coordinate of negative 3 quarters. So, we're going to have to do some legwork. The first angle can be determined simply by using your inverse cosine button on your calculator. So, the inverse cos of negative 3 over 4 will give us an angle of approximately 2.42 radians. Hmm, this is interesting. Despite the fact that we are dealing with a negative x-coordinate, the inverse cosine button gave us back a positive angle which means that the terminal side is traveling in the counterclockwise direction. Graphically, the terminal side corresponding to this angle is approximately in this location. It's about 139 degrees. Graphically, you can see that the second possible angle that can cause an x-coordinate of negative 3 quarters is in this approximate location. So the big question is, how do we determine the size of that angle? Using logical deduction, you should be able to realize that the second angle can be calculated by subtracting it from 360 degrees. Or in other words, subtracting it from 2 pi radians. And in our example, that will produce 2 pi subtract 2.42 radians which gives you around 3.86 radians. This means that in order to produce an x coordinate of negative 3 quarters on our trig circle the two possible angles would have to be 2.42 radians and 3.86 radians. What's extremely interesting is that the second angle is determined the exact same way as in case 1 where the x coordinate was positive. So we can conclude that basically there is only one case for solving the zeros of a cosine function. With this information we can now head back to our main procedure and finally state that the entire expression x minus pi can either equal to 2.42 radians or to 3.86 radians.
Continuing our work, we will eventually determine that x could equal to 4.35 radians, or x could also equal to 5.07 radians. Therefore, in our final conclusion, we can state that the zeros occur when x equals 4.35 radians, and every pi radians after that, or the zero can also occur at 5.07, and then every pi radians after that. And that's all there is, ladies and gentlemen, to determining the zero of a cosine function in which the trig circle cannot help us determine our possible angles.